Father. Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Bless the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Worship Him, adore Him. Bless His holy name, bless His holy name. He's worthy to be praised, He's worthy to be adored, He's worthy to be magnified. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration, bless him for all he has done, praise his holy name, magnify the King of Kings, magnify the Lord of Lords, bless the Ancient of Days. Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We give you all glory, all honor, all adoration. Because we are worthy to be praised. We are worthy to be adored. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in my life tonight, prove your almightiness. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, in my life tonight, Prove your almightiness. Show that we are actually the almighty. Just show that we are the almighty in my life tonight. Prove your almightiness. The only way you can do it, prove your almightiness in my life tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And you lift your voice to him one more time and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, if only three people complete restoration tonight let me be one of them open your mouth now and cry to him if only three people are getting complete restoration tonight in the mighty name of Jesus let me be one of them let me be one of them Complete restoration, my Father and my God. If only three people are getting complete restoration from you tonight, let me be one of them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. What a mighty God we serve, hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve, hallelujah, heaven has adored him. 
surprise someone here tonight <laughs> Father we, we just want to say thank you King of Kings Lord of Lords Ancient of Days the Lion of the tribe of Judah the Holy One of Israel the unchangeable changer, the one without beginning, without end, the Alpha as well as the Omega, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for Wednesday. Thank you for what you did last night. Thank you in advance for today and tomorrow. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. The way only you can do it, my Father and my God, surprise us tonight. All of us here, the full house, in the old arena and every other viewing centers all over the world tonight father surprise us give us a very very pleasant surprise answer all prayers by fire do much more than we dare hope for. And at the end of it all, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Prophesy to two or three people and tell them you will have complete restoration tonight. And then you may please be seated. With the exception of those who are born in the month of December. If you are born in December, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I'm committing your children born in the month of December into your hands. December is the last month of the year. And we know you always reserve the best till the last. 
For all these your children born in the month of December, Father, give them the best. In every area of their lives, Father, let them have the best. And today, give them a new beginning. A new beginning of joy, of success, of progress, of anointing, of mighty testimonies. And let them end very well. Let them serve you to the very end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If we are born in December, shout another hallelujah. Please be seated. Oh, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Today, additional 11 children have been born. Five boys and six girls. Bringing to a total 31 babies born thus far. 16 boys and 15 girls. So let the boys shout praise the Lord. And let the girls shout hallelujah. I want to make an appeal straight away. If you have any doubts at all concerning what we will be hearing as we go along tonight, please keep the doubts to yourself. Because my daddy told me while I was in the prayer room that he would do extraordinary things here tonight. And when you know, whenever you hear there is someone here, it's not necessarily you, it may be the fellow sitting next to you. I just beg you, don't express any doubts tonight. Because you remember when that prophet said that within 24 hours, there will be super abundance. There was one fellow who said, how can it be? And that fellow saw it, but he didn't partake of it. If you have any doubts tonight, I beg you, put it aside or keep it to yourself. I mean, for example, Daddy told me, even while staying in the prayer room, and I, I don't know all he wants to do, but he said that there's someone here, someone will be either here or in one of the viewing centers. That the fellow lost his teeth mysteriously. The, the teeth were just dropping out. For reason nobody can explain. And that he says before the night is out, all the teeth will be back. He told me, he told me. I, while I was in the prayer room, he told me that there's someone either here or maybe in the old arena or in any of the viewing centers who doesn't like the shape of his head. Daddy says before the night is out, he will reshape the head. You see, Daddy told me, Daddy told me 
that there is nobody here, nobody here who has seen this kind of night before in your life. So I, I, I want to appeal right from the word go. This is not going to be a usual night. It's going to be extraordinary. Are you ready for an extraordinary God? Shout a big hallelujah. I can assure you. I can assure you. <laughs> uh, I can assure you that within the next two hours, your life will never, never, never be the same again. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I will make one or two announcements to calm me down because, <laughs> because I can hardly stand. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you very much to the mass choir. You did very well again tonight. Thank you. On December 31, by the special grace of God, and don't, don't listen to the devil, you are going to see the new year, so. There will be Holy Communion service here uh, at 7 o'clock. That will be followed by a, a service of songs. And then we we'll move on to the watch night eve. And that night we'll be talking about enforcing prophecy, compelling prophecy to come to pass. That's December 31, here. We will try and finish as early as possible because January 1 happens to be Sunday and the first Sunday of the year is our annual Thanksgiving. So we will finish on time so that we can be in church by 9 a.m. the following morning. And that Sunday there will be no preliminaries, we we'll just go straight into the Thanksgiving service beginning at 9. For those of us who will not be here on the 31st of December because we are far away, January 6th will be the first Holy Ghost service of the new year. And the theme for that Holy Ghost service it's a very strange theme, but I tell you the way Daddy gave it to me. The theme for January Holy Ghost service is Abba Father. I don't know what he has in mind, but uh, we will find out when we come. Okay. All right. Now, as we've been doing since the beginning of the Congress, the, my little sermon will be two little parts. Part one will be addressing those of us who are yet to give our life to Jesus. And then the second part will go into the real topic for today. But let me start by reading the text 
for the Congress itself. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to 27. Joel 2, 25 to 27. This is the Almighty God speaking to, to me and possibly to my wife. Maybe it's also speaking to one extra person. God said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty. It doesn't matter what the economy may be saying, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and then in verse 27 he says and ye shall know that i'm in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and honest and my people shall never be ashamed Again, one more time, tell the people to your right and to your left, in the mighty name of Jesus, I will never know shame again. Now, just for about five to ten minutes, I want to talk to those of you who probably have not yet given your life to Jesus or you gave your life to Jesus once and now you are backsliding we need to settle your case very quickly before we proceed forward you see there are many advantages of being a son of God one of the major advantages is the miracle provision in Matthew 15 verse 21 to 28 Matthew 15 verse 21 to 28 the Lord Jesus Christ said clearly that miracles are children's bread in other words if you are not a child of God forget miracles if you're not born again and you say you're asking for miracles no 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 what you're asking for is magic not miracles and i can assure you the devil can give you as many magic as you want as long as he knows that at the end of the day he will have your soul miracles come from god and God is holy. The angels are always singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. When you get magic from the devil, from magicians, from false prophets, with one hand they are giving you something, with the other hand they are giving you a body far, far bigger than the one you say you brought to them. But the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrows. When a miracle comes from God, it comes clean. No strings attached. Not only that, one of the blessings of being a child of God is divine protection. You see, in John chapter 8, verse 35, John 8, verse 35, the Bible says, A servant does not abide in the house forever, but the son abides. If you're a child of God, you have the privilege of abiding in the house of God. 
Uh, Psalm 91, from verse 1 to the end, Psalm 91 verses 1 through all the way to the end, says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then he went on to catalog for you what will happen if you abide. He said, thousands will be falling by your right, 10,000 will be falling by your left. They won't come near you. Divine protection. Some people have said, but we thought that Job was a man of God. How come he had all those problems? They've said that to me to try and convince me that if Job can get into trouble, I can get into serious trouble too. I said, no, 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 you don't seem to understand. Job is a servant of God. I am a son. There's a world of difference between a son and a servant. You can perform experiments with a servant. Nobody performs an experiment with his children. I remember years ago when we were living in Moshi and things were very rough in Moshi in those days. I don't know if, if, if they Sons, they were kept in the bedroom. When you are a child of God, you are secure. Your future is secure. Secure. Romans 8, verse 16 to 17. Romans 8, 16 to 17 says, If you are a child of God, then you are heirs of God. You have a heritage in God. You are joined here with Jesus Christ. Whatever is available to Jesus Christ is available to you. If you are a child of God, you have divine guidance. God will be guiding you. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans 8 14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are led. One funny fellow came to by me. By the Spirit of God, they are the sons ago, of said, God. Sir, I have a prophecy for you from the Lord. One funny fellow came to he me. He came from Akure. Yes, he said, Sir, it's I okay. have a prophecy for you from the Lord. He came from Akure. I said, Okay. Speak on. He said, Thus saith the Lord. Tell my servant Adeboye. I said, Shut up. Stop right there. He said, what do you mean? I have not even spoken. I said, no, no, just stop right there. Your message is not from God. He said, how can you know you haven't heard it? I said, my father doesn't ad address me as servant. He calls me son. When you're a child of God, you enjoy a peculiar kind of love. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, he said, Behold, what manner of love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Special love. I remember years ago when I began to, when I was, I would be talking and I would say, my daddy said, my daddy said, and then some people say, who is this your daddy? I said, God. I said, how can you be calling God daddy? His father. 
our Father which art in heaven. I said, don't let us quarrel. He may be your father, but he's my daddy. There's a difference between the two. Special love when you're a child of God. And because of this special love, Romans chapter 8 verse 37, Romans 8 37 says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm not boasting. If I'm boasting, I'm boasting in the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. Only a true child of God can say that. Through the love of the Almighty God. If you're a child of God, He loves you specially. And you know what it means to be more than a conqueror? I think I've explained that one to you before. More than a conqueror means you win without fighting. Because your father will be fighting your battles for you. So if you are not a child of God, you are missing a lot. You're missing the love of God. You are missing the victory that only God can give. You are missing the protection that is available only to children of God. You are missing miracles that are the bread of children. You have a future that is very, very uncertain. And some of you probably have heard me tell this story before. Listen carefully because now I'm about to call those of you who are not born again forward to give your life to Jesus. A man came to me and said, Sir, I hear that you are a prophet of God. I said, I'm a pastor. He said, We know you to be a prophet. I said, I'm a pastor. He said, But they said, Whatever you say comes to pass. I said, God has been faithful. He said, in any case, can you tell me my future? Ah, I said, that is simple. Answer a simple question and I will tell you your future. He said, what is the question? Are you born again? Are you a child of God? He said, no. I said, ah, your future will be terrible. He said, how do you know? You have not even prayed. You don't even know my name. I said, there's no need. It is written. Woe to the wicked. He shall be ill with him. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 11. It, I said, there's no prophecy that can cancel the word of God. It is written. He said, suppose then I have answered and I said, yes, I'm a child of God. Ah, I would have told you your future will be glorious. Because in the same Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, Isaiah 3 verse 10, he says, say ye to the righteous, he shall be well with him. It doesn't matter what anybody may say, I know my tomorrow will be all right. What about your own? So if you are within this auditorium or you are in the old arena or you are in any of the viewing centers all over the world and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ so you can become a child of God, come quickly now. I'm going to count from 1 to 15 because I see some of you are very far away. But before I say 15, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you must be standing before me. So I can pray for your salvation, you become a child of God, and then you can be partakers of all the blessings that will follow. I'm counting now. 1. Now, anybody
anybody who wants to clap for Jesus Christ, do so very well. If you can't do it very well, don't bother yourself. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, hurry up, because we see how a lot to do tonight. Two. Six. Those hands will never be empty. The hands that are clapping for Jesus, they will never wither and they will never be empty. Seven. Those of you who are still very far away, just keep on coming. Don't stop. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Thirteen. Fourteen. Just keep coming, keep coming. Don't stop. We're about to pray now, but keep coming, keep coming. Now, those of you already in front, and those of you who are still on the way, pray as you come. And ask Jesus Christ to be merciful unto you, to save your soul, forgive all your sins, and make you a child of God. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them that the Almighty Savior will save their souls, even as He has saved our own souls. Let's intercede for them. And cancel us, please, you need to come and attend to these people here. They are quite, quite a number. So please, cancel us. Could you begin to move forward? And come and attend to them here. Those of you who are still on the way, keep on me, keep on me. Yeah, I can see you. I see you. You are still running. I know you are coming from a long distance. So keep coming. 
Keep coming and pray as you come. Pray that the Almighty Savior will save your soul, that He will forgive all your sins, and will accept you into the family of God, so you become a child of God. Promise Him you will serve Him as Lord and Savior for the rest of your life. Call on Him for just one more minute. Yes, I see you running. Just keep coming. Keep coming. I wait 10 seconds more and then I will pray. But just make sure you get there before I finish praying. That's important. God bless you. And thank you, counselors. Let's, let's also move very quickly and surround them so it will be easy to reach them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I just want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know wise cast out. These people have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Amen. Let your blood wash them clean. Amen. Save their souls now. Amen. And please write their names in the book of life. Amen. And I pray that from today onward, they will never go back into sin. Amen. And from this moment onward, any time they call on you, Lord God Almighty, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now, those of you in front, I want to rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. The counselors will give you a card straight away. And feed that card and return to the counselors. And as soon as we've done that, you are free to go back. We'll be in contact with you. God bless you. Uh, I will appreciate it if the choir will sing some worship song for the few minutes that these people need to fill their cans. God bless you.
Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. The Son of God. The Son, the Son, the Son of God. In the next one hour or so, I'll be calling on you to stand up and pray. It's not going to be one time or two, not going to be five or six or seven. I'll keep on calling you to stand and pray. But I'll make it easy for you. If you can't be standing and sitting, standing and sitting. No problem, relax, sit down and pray. God will still hear you. But I'm just appealing. Because a day like this comes only once in a lifetime. And when I ask you to pray, don't pray like ladies and gentlemen tonight. Pray like warriors. I guarantee you, in the name that's above every other name, before the sun rises in the morning, you will testify. Ezekiel 7. I'm reading from verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel 37. From verse 1 to 10, I want to talk about complete restoration. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. 
that there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this lane that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I stand here tonight as a representative of the Most High God, and I prophesy to someone here, your dry bones shall live again. I told those of you who have been here from Monday that restoration, complete restoration, is a process. And using the example of these dry bones, I want to point out just a handful of points, maybe about 14 of them in all of the process that will lead to your complete restoration. The first thing is, as we see from this story, from the fact that the bones were not just dry, but very dry. Whenever God wants to begin the process, of total restoration, he remembers the forgotten. These bones have been there for a long time. They were dry, they were very dry, they were forgotten. But one day, God remembered dry bones. Whenever God remembers the forgotten, miracles are bound to follow. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 1, Genesis chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible says, God remembered Noah. I have been shut up in the ark for days. Suddenly God remembered Noah. And the time of hiding was over. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 22 to 24, Genesis 30, verse 22 to 24, God remembered Rachel and opened her womb. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 24, Exodus 2, verse 24, God remembered Israel after 430 years. And their years of suffering ended. Some of you have heard me tell this story of something that happened in 1952. A half-brother of mine traveled out of her village and came back with a face cap with many colors. Beautiful. Those of us in the village, we've never seen anything so beautiful before. He looks great on his head. And we all gather around him, admiring it. Then all of a sudden he took it from off his head and put it on my head. And all the other little children were beginning to say, who, ha, ah, because he allowed me to even wear this face cap. And then he said something, something unbelievable. He said, 
it is yours. I bought it for you. Huh? I almost fainted with joy. I almost fainted with joy. I couldn't believe it. Years passed. More than 30 years passed. Then one day I was just remembering things that happened in my childhood. Things that made serious impact upon my childhood. And I remembered that occasion. Ah. And it occurred to me the one who did such a great thing for me I've never done anything for him so I made up my mind I would do something I bought a car and sent it to him when the car arrived he thought it was me visiting he came out saw my driver and said ah, where is daddy Oh, he's not here. But he said, I should go and give you this car. He will be responsible for your driver. He will be responsible for the maintenance of the car. Your own is just to get up, get into the car, and go wherever you want to go. My driver said, when he heard that, he began to look for a chair to sit on. He was dazed. I said, that's good. That's how I felt some 30 years ago. God remembered him. I want you to stand on your feet and lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, remember me today. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Remember me today, Almighty God. Remember me today. Remember me today. Remember me today. If, if only you can remember me. I know things will change. Almighty God, remember me today. Remember me today. Remember me today. Thank you, Father. Remember me today. That's my request number one. Almighty God, please remember me today remember me today God remember the dry bones that's when their story began Lord remember me today remember me today thank you Father Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. We'll make the prayers short, short, and sharp. But please pray with all your heart. The next thing that followed in the process of complete restoration is that God visited the dry box. He didn't just remember. He took a further step. He visited the dry books. And whenever God visits somebody, something miraculous must happen. In John 
John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9. John 5. Thank you, Daddy. We haven't even started. Daddy asked me to remind you or tell you if we don't need to be reminded of a Holy Ghost service we had at National Stadium in Surulere some years ago. And there was a man there who had lost a kidney through operation. And the second kidney was now beginning to misbehave. He was there at the stadium. And the word of God came. Ah, there is somebody here. One of your kidneys have been removed. The second one is behaving. God said, before the sun rises, I will give you two new kidneys. The following money, because the man knew it was he, it was he, he shouted for joy. He ran to his doctor. The doctor examined him. I said, I can't believe this. He said, What is it? You cannot believe. The doctor said, I remember you very well. The day we removed one of your kidneys. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. The operation lasted 18 hours. So I can't forget you. The man said, yes, yes. And what is it you see now? The man said, you have two new kidneys. Brand new. Now the Lord asked me to tell you that story, to tell you this. That there is someone here tonight. Every organ in your body that has been damaged shall be replaced. John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9. There was a man by the pool of Bethesda. He has been there for 38 years waiting for an angel to come and stir the water. He has tried for 38 years and had failed for 38 years. The day God paid him a visit, his sufferings ended. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6 to 15, 2 Chronicles 1, 6 to 15, when God paid Solomon a visit in the night, that boy got a blank check from the Almighty God. God said, ask whatever you will, anything. The boy asked for wisdom and understanding. God said, is that all you can ask? He said, I will give you much more. When God pays you a visit, he not only will grant your request, but he will do more. When God paid Abraham a visit in Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. Genesis 18, verse 1 to 4. The laughter of Sarah began. I'm believing God for someone today that God is going to visit. After we begin, I'll tell you a funny story before you pray. I was visiting one of my friends, and it was dinner time, so he invited me to the table. Himself, myself, his wife, and then I saw some four young ladies. And one or two other guests who were there. And the wife was a very good cook. She gave me a big leg of a chicken and I enjoyed the thing. Before you knew it, I had finished the whole thing and I was cracking the bones. When she turned to me, I said, 
you want more? I said, if you don't mind. So he gave me another leg. And I was devouring that second one. When the man who was sitting by my left suddenly coughed to get my attention. So I turned and he said, Daddy, I want to tell you something. The moment I turned, one of the ladies sitting on my right hand side grabbed my plate and she began to run into the kitchen. And the other ladies followed her. I didn't know what was happening. I mean, they, they've been waiting for whatever I would leave behind. But they saw that the way I was going, I was going to finish this thing again. The four of them went, ate the remainder of the leg of the chicken, it was, and they came out laughing. Within three months, I had their testimonies. Three of them were believing God for a future partner. Within three months, they were all married. One was believing God for a mighty promotion. She got her own even before the others got married. God visited and their laughter began. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, if you have visited two people here tonight, let me be one of them. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. If you are visiting two people, let me be one of them so that my own laughter can begin. Visit me tonight. Visit me tonight, Lord. Let my own laughter begin. Visit me tonight. If we are visiting only two people, let me be one of them. Let me be one of them. Let me be one of them, Father. Visit me tonight. Visit me tonight. Visit me tonight. Jesus mighty name we have prayed and so shall it be in Jesus name please be seated number three God didn't visit the dry bones alone he came with a prophet you see in Amos chapter 3 verse 7 Amos 3 verse 7 the Bible says Surely God will not do anything without first of all revealing it to his prophet. When God told me that the theme for this year's Congress is going to be complete transformation or complete restoration rather, I danced for joy because I knew you is up to something. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 Hosea 12 verse 13 says By a prophet He brought Israel out And by a prophet He preserved Israel He took a prophet In 2 Kings chapter 2 Verse 19 to 22 2 Kings chapter 2 Verse 19 to 22 He took a prophet To put an end to all the Terrible things happening in Jericho. He took a prophet to cancel the curse that had been tormenting the, that city since the days of Joshua. I don't claim to be a prophet, but I hear from him once in a while. And when he says this is what he wants to do, you can consider it done. 
Some of us here will remember we had the Holy Ghost night at Liberty Stadium in Nevada. We had a wonderful time. Souls were saved, healings, etc., etc. We were about to round up when God spoke to me, and what He said was difficult to believe. He said there was a woman there under her armpits. Instead of hair, it is feathers. And she believed me with this horrible secret all the days of her life. Very early in the morning, before the husband can wake up, she will run into the toilet and pluck off the, leather, the feathers. By tomorrow night, the feathers are back. The Almighty God said, call her out. I will deliver her out of her mystery. I said to God, Daddy, you know I will do whatever you ask me to do. If you say there is somebody here with feathers under her armpit, there must be somebody there. You won't lie. This is a studio. Light, full on. Cameras all over the place. How will this fellow come forward? Daddy, we've had a good time. Let's go home. He said to me, son, do you want her to die with a problem? I said, no. So I made the announcement. Some of the people on the altar here who remember the occasion very well. We were not expecting anybody to come out. But a well-dressed woman came forward. I thought maybe she didn't understand. I explained. She said, I know what you said. And when she began to speak, very good English, highly educated person. We prayed a simple prayer. She checked the armpit and the feathers were gone. It takes a prophet for God to begin the process of total restoration. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, in Jesus' name, Send the word through your son to me. Today, open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Just send the word through your son to me today. The word that is mine directly. Send the word to me, Lord. Send a word to me, Lord. That's all. I'm waiting for a word. Send a word to me. Send a word to me, Lord. Send a word. Send a word. Send a word. Jesus. Send a word. Send a word through your son to me, Lord. Send a word to me tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be. Please be seated. Number four. As soon as God and the prophet arrived, God spoke. He started talking to the prophet. Can these bones live? 
And the first time God spoke, a miracle happened. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Genesis 1 verse 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Whenever God speaks, light breaks forth. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, when Bartimaeus had been crying to Jesus, have mercy on me, and they brought him to Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, what do you want? He said, I want to receive my sight. He spoke. And suddenly, a man who had been in darkness for 40 years, suddenly saw light for the first time. You see, it is written in Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm oh, thank you, Father. I want to say amen to this one even before I tell you. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, before the end of this year, expect a visitor of joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know it's going to be a great night. Amen and amen. amen. Daddy said there's someone here tonight. He said your achievements in the coming year will dazzle all your enemies. Amen. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. You see, whenever God spoke, the irreversible becomes reversed. Because he's the word that made all things. So when he speaks, he can change everything around. In John 11, verse 39 to 44, John 11, 39 to 44, when he got to the tomb of Lazarus, all he did was he spoke. And Lazarus, who had been dead for four good days, came forth. And many of you know the fellow I'm talking about. Married for several years, no issue. And one day, a relative called the husband and said, Stop wasting your money. This woman will never have a child because we have stolen her womb. And she came to the Holy Ghost service. We were seeing the very first auditorium. And the word of God came and said, There's someone here that they said will never have a child. God said, You are going to have a set of twins. And she received it with joy. Within a month, she was pregnant. When the pregnancy was three months old, she went to the gynecologist who had already told her too that she would never have a child. And the gynecologist said, ah, I don't know how it happened, but you are pregnant. You are pregnant with a child. He said, no, 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 <laughs> not a child. God spoke through my daddy and said, twins. Ah. The doctor said, I can only see one. Ah, I said, you are seeing your own. The next time she went back, the doctor said, I don't know what happened, but I can see twins here. Yeah. The word of God coming towards you shall be fulfilled. time came for delivery you know the fellow I'm talking about at least some of you do and because these are special children they, she didn't want to take any chances at all so she went abroad to deliver and say hey, doctor 
operate. Just bring them out so that they won't say they died during labor. When she woke out, when she came out from anesthetics, she saw everybody looking at her strangely. How was the problem? Where are my children? They said, your children are okay. Because after they brought out the two children, the husband said to the doctor, please, these two will be enough. Tie the womb. I don't want any more. That's when they discovered the miracle. Because the doctor said, I have been performing operations, I think for 34 years. This is the first time I saw a woman pregnant without a womb. She had no womb. Twins came out of there. I'm talking about the almighty God. I'm talking about the one who can do what no man can do. I want you to stand on your feet and lift your voice to the almighty God and say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, speak a word into my life. Open your mouth and cry to the almighty God. Speak a word. Speak a word into my life. Speak a word. Speak a word. Thank you, Father. Speak a word. Into my life tonight. Speak a word, Lord. Speak a word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Speak a word into my life, Daddy. Speak a word tonight. Jesus mighty name we have prayed and so shall it be in Jesus name please be seated number five God spoke and then the prophet prophesied he commanded the prophet prophesy and when God is the one behind the prophet whatever the prophet says will come to pass now there's a difference between the word of knowledge when God simply says there is someone here and prophecy when the prophet is operating under the unction of the Holy Spirit and he begins to speak first Samuel chapter 3 verse 19 first Samuel 3 verse 19 the Bible says God did not allow the word of Samuel to fall to the ground. That means, if you are his prophet, when you speak, he will back it up. In Job chapter 22, verse 21 to 28, Job 22, verse 21 to 28, the word of God says, you satisfy certain conditions, you will decree a thing. And it shall be established unto you. In Second Kings chapter seven, verse one to eleven. Second Kings seven, verse one to eleven. When there was a siege on Samaria, and Elisha said that within twenty-four hours there will be abundance. He didn't say, "I have just prayed." God has just told me. No, no, no. He prophesied. And God backed it up. I'm going to prophesy into the life of someone very soon. But you remember the story. It may sound to you simple, but uh, it will illustrate my point. 
I told you I went to a place to, to minister in Ekoi. Only the big and mighty gathered there. And there was this young man, somehow he managed to sneak in. When I finished preaching, he came to me with a gift. I said, ah, I've never had this kind of preaching before, so I want to bless you. And he gave me $10,000. So I took it from him. I said, God bless you. Next time will be more. He was upset. Ah, what kind of greedy pastor is this? He gave you $10,000. That's all I have. And you are saying next time will be more. He didn't know I was prophesying. At the time he gave me that money, he had 10 petrol stations. By the following year, when I returned to that place, he had 110. And so he brought me another gift. And this time when I said, next time will be more, his amen was loud and clear. I want to say to somebody here today, no matter how great your blessings now, next year you'll be far, far greater. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say, Father, prophesy abundance into my life. I'm tired of merely surviving. Just prophesy abundance into my life. Prophesy abundance into my life. Prophesy abundance into my life, oh Lord. I'm tired of just managing, just barely surviving. Prophesy abundance into my life. Thank you, Father. Prophesy abundance into my life. So I don't have to rack my brain before I do anything I want to do for you. Let me have more than sufficient so that anything I want to do for God will be easy. Prophesy abundance into my life. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Number six. After the Son of Man, the man of God prophesied as commanded by God. The Bible said there was a noise. Anytime. time God comes to camp and he wants to do something special there must be a noise in 1 Samuel chapter 4 in 1 Samuel chapter 4 verse 5 to 6 the Bible said when they brought the Ark of the Covenant into the camp of the children of Israel, they shouted. In Joshua chapter 6, Amen. Don't worry. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, Joshua 6, verse 20, when the wall of Jericho was about to fall, there was a noise.
Amen. In, in, in Second Kings, in Second Kings chapter seven, verse one to eleven. Second Kings chapter seven, verse one to eleven. When that siege was against Samaria, and God was going to lift the siege, He caused the enemy to hear a noise. Some of the old ones, some of the old ones among us will remember the testimony of a woman who for one reason or the other for years, anything she ate, she vomited. The doctors have done everything they could. She wasn't pregnant, she, was, she just kept on vomiting everything she ate. They x-rayed her, they did everything, or everything looked normal, but she just kept on vomiting. Then she came to a butemeter. And I just said that somebody should shout, hallelujah. As she opened her mouth to shout, As she opened her mouth to shout, a worm jumped out of her throat. The worm didn't show on x-ray because it wasn't an ordinary worm. And from that moment onward, she became normal. I want you to stand on your feet. Raise your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, let my enemies hear a noise. Today, go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. All my enemies, just let them hear a noise. Let them hear a noise today so they will leave me alone. Let them hear a noise. My enemies hear a noise from heaven so that they will leave me alone. Let my enemies hear a noise tonight. Let them hear a noise. Let them hear a noise from heaven. Any enemy, those that are inside, let them hear a noise so they will jump out. Those that are outside, wherever they may be, let them hear a noise. 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 Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Do I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Please be seated. Eh? And then number seven, the Bible said there was a shaking. There was a shaking. Whenever God is present, there is bound to be a shaking. Psalm 114, verse 7. Psalm 114, verse 7. They said, The earth must tremble before the Almighty God. There was a shaking. In Acts 16, verse 25 to 26, Acts 16, verse 25 to 26, there was an earthquake. When God arrived, at the prison where they were keeping Paul and Silas. There was a shaking that shook the prison doors open and everyone's bound was loosed. 
In Matthew 28, verse 1 to 2, Matthew 28, verses 1 and 2, on the resurrection morning, when Jesus rose from the dead, when there was a brand new era, a new beginning, the Bible said there was an earthquake. There was a shaking. Ah, thank you, my father. <laughs> Daddy said I should tell somebody, he said, fear not, I will support you all the way. And he asked me to tell a woman. And I'm rejoicing with that woman. Because he, he said, he said, I will clean up your womb in readiness for my special servant. I've told you the story before. My father in the Lord, myself, and four others, we went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to attend Kennedy Camp Meeting, 1979. And we stayed in an hotel called Mario Hotel. And then one morning, my father in the Lord called all of us to his room and told us, that he will soon be leaving and that I will be succeeding him. We were completely unprepared for such an announcement. So we all fell down and began to pray. And you, if you are told that uh, your life is about to change completely, that all your plans will soon come to an end because God's plan is about to begin, you don't pray small prayer. Suddenly there was a knock at the door. And I was the one near the door. I opened the door and the engineer of the hotel was there. He said, what kind of instrument are you people playing? I said, we are not playing any instruments. We are praying. He said, no. He came into the room. He looked around. He looked under the bed. He looked in the wardrobe. There were no musical instruments. He was puzzled. When he was about to leave the room, he turned back to me. He said, what do you say you are doing? I said, we are praying. I said, why? He said, because the hotel was shaking. And we have traced the source of the shaking to this room. We left. They shut down the hotel. Because they didn't believe it is prayer that shook the hotel. They dug around the foundation to see what is wrong. They couldn't find any problem. And because the hotel shook, they shut the hotel down for 30 years. 30 years later, I was visiting Tulsa again with my children. And I took them to the hotel. This is the hotel where your father prayed, and the hotel shook. It was still closed after 30 years. And I felt a compassion for the owner of the hotel. So I laid my hand on the hotel and I prayed a simple prayer. Within a year, it was reopened again. A new era was beginning in the redeemed Christian Church of God, even though we didn't know it then. We were only 40 churches, headquarters, and 39 parishes when we prayed that prayer and there was that shaking. Today, by the grace of God, we are in 192 nations of the world because there was 
is shaking. Stand on your feet. Cry to the Almighty God. And say, Father, because of me, let there be a shaking tonight. Shake the heaven, shake the earth, shake whatever you need to shake. Let there be a shaking because of me tonight. Because of me, so that I can begin a new era, so I can have a brand new beginning. Let there be a shaking tonight. Let there be a shaking that will begin a brand new era in my life. Let there be a shaking tonight. Let there be a shaking. Let there be a shaking in the heavens. Let there be a shaking on the earth. Let there be a shaking. Shake the heavens, shake the earth because of me tonight so that I can begin a brand new era in my life. Let there be a shaking. Let there be a shaking. Let there be a shaking. Thank you, Father. Jesus mighty name we have prayed so shall it be in Jesus name please be seated number eight after the shaking the Bible says bones came together bones to bones you know what that means According to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 23, Genesis 2, verse 18 to 23, the Almighty God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. By the time God finished what He said there, Adam was able to look up and say, Ah, ah, this is the bone of my bone. This is the flesh of my flesh. Bones came to bones. That means loneliness is over. But then when you consider the fact that these, are, these were dry bones, how were they able to find their corresponding bones because the bones were assisted. When you read Genesis chapter 24 from verse 63 to 67, Genesis 24 verse 63 to 67, you will discover that Isaac didn't even make any effort to get a wife. He just went on a stroll and came back with a wife. Somebody has did all the donkey work. Unlike Genesis 28 verse 15 to 30, Genesis 28 verse 15 to 30, where Jacob had to labor for 14 years before he got the lady he wanted. You know, Last Saturday, there were three weddings at the redemption camp. Three weddings, one Saturday. And my daddy asked me to do something tonight. This one, you are not going to pray. He has allowed me the privilege of prophesying. That from now on, in the redeemed Christian Church of God, there will always be mass weddings. And I'm going a 
a step further because this is this is my night. Is it your night also? In the coming year, in the coming year, our homes will be filled with the joy of marriages. If you receive it, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Please be seated. Number nine. As soon as the bones came to bones, flesh and skin covered them. You know the meaning of that? The nakedness of the bones was covered. And when they say your nakedness is covered, it means what would have caused you shame was prevented. The Almighty God is going to cover your nakedness tonight. In Second Kings chapter four, Second Kings chapter four, verse one to seven. Second Kings four, verse one to seven. There was this widow who was in debt, and the creditor said, "We are within twenty-four hours. If we don't pay." We will sell your children. Before then, she had been pretending that all was well. But now, the secret is coming out. But she ran to the man of God. The man of God prophesied abundance. And her nakedness was covered. When the, when the creditors came, to collect their money, she was waiting. Not only was she able to pay, she had enough to live on for the rest of her life. I pray for somebody here today. You will never know shame. In Second Kings chapter five, verse one to four. Second Kings chapter five. Verse 1 to 4. Neymar had a shame that could not even be hidden. He was a leper. But God covered his nakedness. Instead of leprosy, he gave him a brand new skin. I can give you several other examples, but the text we read at the beginning... Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to 27. Joel 2, 25 to 27. It's enough. God said it again and again. My people shall never be ashamed. I was telling my wife, I was reminded of an incident in my life years ago. There was a program in Tulsa that I wanted to attend. I had no money. And the airlines at that time for one reason or the other said, if we want to go to Europe, we will take you on Naira ticket. From Europe to America, you have to pay a hard currency. I didn't have a semi-hard currency, not to talk of a hard one. But I said, God, I, I must attend this meeting. I will go by faith to London. God, you are the great provider. I left by faith. I arrived in London. No money. And I've never... I've never known how to beg. And I decree to every one of you, from this moment onward, you will never beg. Yeah. 
But two days before the program was to start, a lady, I don't mind mentioning her name, of blessed memory, Mama Ayida, who just met. Ah, Pastor, how are you? I said, oh, I'm fine. Uh, and suddenly she said, You need some money, don't you? Ah. <laughs> I can't say no. I said, Well, but uh, don't worry, man. God will provide. He said, I feel God is the one asking me to ask you, what is it you need? I said, Ma, since you are the one who asked, I need 350 pounds to buy a return ticket, economy, from London to Tulsa and back. I know once I get to Tulsa, Pastor Stephen Rattled is there. He will take care of me. He will house me. He will feed me. He wasn't a rich man then, no, but whatever he had, I know we will share. <laughs> uh, he had a car that we had to pray it, that God would not let the brake fail. <laughs> but it's my friend, so once I get there, I know whatever he had, we will share. Mama took me to her bank and we drew 500 pounds. I said, Mama, I need only 350. He said, yes, what about pocket money? Ah. She covered my nakedness. Stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God. Father, cover my nakedness. Cover. Oh, Lord, cover my nakedness. Cover my nakedness. Cover my nakedness, Almighty God. Cover my nakedness. Cover my nakedness. Cover my nakedness. Don't let the world discover my nakedness. Please, Daddy, cover my nakedness. Remove every reproach from my life. Lord, please, cover my nakedness. Thank you, Father. Cover my nakedness. Cover my nakedness. Cover my nakedness, Lord. Cover my nakedness today. Let my shame be seen. Don't let my secret become open to the world. Cover my nakedness, Lord. Almighty God, please cover my nakedness. Thank you, Father. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. You will never be ashamed. Amen. Please be seated. Number 10. Now when the bones came together, flesh covered them, skin covered them, the man of God said, but there was still no breath in them. There were still bones, now covered with flesh, covered with skin, but still lifeless. And then something happened. God spoke again. So, son of man, we haven't finished this job. Speak again. God spoke again. Now, God normally speaks once. Psalm 62 verse 11. Psalm 62 verse 11 says, God has spoken once. 
Verse 1, if I heard this, their power belongs to God. He doesn't need to speak twice. All he needs to say is, let there be light and there be light. But he spoke again. Why? Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Mark 8. 22 to 25. He brought him. He brought a man to Jesus Christ. He was blind. Jesus touched him. I said, "All right. What's the situation now?" He said, "Oh, I see men like trees walking about." Oh, Jesus said, "Okay, you need a second touch." He gave him a second touch, and he saw clearly. There are some people who need a second touch from God before their restoration can be complete. They need a second touch. They need God to speak again. I can give you examples. You, you know the story of the woman who came to Holy Ghost service in London to see her siblings. And suddenly the word of God came and the Holy Ghost said that there's someone here. You have just lost 10 years of your age. And she was glad. She was telling her sibling, hey, don't call me auntie anymore now. I'm even younger than some of you. And almost immediately God spoke again. I said, there's someone here. You've already gone past the age of childbearing. But now... We are going to have a child. She jumped and said, ah, thank you. God spoke to her twice. One evening. Nine months later, she was carrying her baby. I was in London preparing our Sunday school pamphlet. When God spoke to me and said, son, what do you want for your birthday? I know his voice. I, I, I couldn't believe that God would be interested in my birthday. I didn't even know he, was, he, he is interested in the birthday of anybody. I had to say, Lord, please forgive me. If that is you, speak again. And then he said, yes, it is me. I said, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, what I want is that every member of my congregation will get a miracle. He said, when you get to call them together, and I will do what you ask for. The result of God speaking to me twice in one day is what you are seeing now. He spoke twice. I want you to stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, give me a second touch. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Give me a second touch tonight. Give me a second touch tonight. Give me a second touch tonight. Second touch tonight, Father, that will take care of my situation permanently. Give me a second touch. Almighty God, give me a second touch tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus. Mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name.
Please be seated. I know we normally end around two, but this is a special night, and there's still quite a bit we are going to do. You will go by three. You can be earlier, because God wants to do something extraordinary in your life in Jesus' name. And then number 11, the prophet prophesied again. The prophet could have said to God, I have already prophesied once. But Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Thank you, Father. The Lord said there is a woman who is pregnant. And the baby in your womb has been kicking very hard since the evening. He asked me to tell you it is because that baby is extraordinarily anointed. Daddy said there's someone here, he said, I have a record of everything you have lost. I will restore all. Now this one is for me special, so, and I feel like jumping. The Almighty God said, there is someone here, I am about to open a new chapter in your life. chapter 3 verse 8 Amos chapter 3 verse 8 the Bible says the lion has roared who will not fear the Lord has spoken who will not prophesy when God tells the prophet to prophesy again he prophesied again and when you read 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1 to 6, 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1 to 6, you get the full impact of that. God sent his prophet Isaiah to King Ezekiah. He said, put your house in order because we're about to die. And as soon as he finished prophesying, he turned to go. The king turned his face to the wall and began to weep and said, God, I don't want to die yet. And God told the prophet, go back and prophesy again. I'm prophesying a second time. Every prophecy that is against your destiny is cancelled now. prophesying again I am saying that in the name that's above every other name all the problems in your life will vanish very soon and then number 12 the wind blew. When the man of God prophesied the second time, the wind blew. Now whenever the wind blows, all manners of miracles will happen. In Exodus 14, verse 21 to 28, Exodus 14, 21 to 28, the wind blew and suddenly, in the Red Sea, where there was no way before, there was a way. And there's going to be a way for somebody here tonight. 
In Second Kings chapter 15, Second Kings 2, verse 9 to 15, when Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit, the man of God said, if you can see me when I'm taken away from you, you'll get what you ask for. And the wind blew. And the man of God got what he wanted. That which your heart desires more than anything else, you will get it tonight. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, on the day of Pentecost, the wind blew and power came. This Congress is not just for you to receive complete restoration. And that's why we still have a, a service tomorrow. And tomorrow night I'll be sharing on demand too. The Almighty God doesn't just want you to have total restoration. He wants you to live here as an agent of restoration. Whenever the wind blows, unbelievable things happen. A couple of years ago, we went to hold a program in one nation. I won't mention the name because they are listening all over the world. I have some children in the university there, and they said I should come. They've started a church in the campus. And they went to get permission from the authorities. They said, no, you know, don't you know the nation you are in? But then one way or the other, they convinced them to let me call. I went. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the wind blew. A couple of weeks later, the highest authority in that section of the nation sent for my boy, who was a pastor, and said, you see this church building? The boy said, yes. It had been closed for years. The boy said, yes, sir. He said, I give it to you. You're going to be using it for your church. When the wind blows, there'll be a way where there is no way. When the wind blows, what they say impossible will become possible. So I want you to stand on your feet and pray this prayer with all your heart. I say, Father, on my behalf tonight, let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let there be a way where there was no way. Let the power of God descend upon me mightily. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow on my behalf. Tonight, let the wind blow. Thank you, Father. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. The wind blow, Daddy. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow, Daddy. On my behalf, on behalf of my family, on behalf of your church. Let the wind blow, Lord. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. We've done very well. We are almost there now. The wind blew. The dry bones received life. And suddenly, 
a great army arose. Now, when, when, when we talk about the greatness of an army, the greatness of an army is not really determined by the number. It is determined by the victories they win. You know, out of here tonight, an army is going to go forth. An army that will conquer the world for Jesus Christ. And see, there are, there, are, there are victories and there are victories. Thank you, Father. Now this one again, <laughs> let me just say yes to it before I tell you. Because Daddy says, and you better believe it, Daddy says there is someone here from the beginning to the end of the coming year you will swim in joy. Oh Lord. <laughs> Daddy says there's someone here. You think that all is well. You are not even sure things can get better. The Lord asked me to tell you, wait till you see what I'm about to do for you. Now, this one is for a businessman. The Lord simply said, I should tell you, your business will bounce back. Oh my, I want to stop, but daddy is still talking. Now, we want you to write this one down. So that when it comes to pass, you'll be able to give the accurate date. The Lord said, can a man be greater than a nation? Yet, I will make you greater than a great nation. You can, you've, you've been great. You can give us more tomorrow. Thank you, Father. A great army is known by. Oh Lord God Almighty. Daddy says, and please, please, I warned you at the beginning. Keep your doubt to yourself. But daddy said there's someone here. He said it's not only the earth that will rejoice. The heavens will rejoice because of you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in, when we talk about victory. It's 4 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 51. 4 Samuel 17, 34 to 51. Tells us about victories that David won. They were all great victories. He fought a lion and won. Fought a bear and won. Fought Goliath with a catapult and won. Great victories. But there is no victory like victory without a fight. I mean, when you read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 to 25, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1 to 25, not only did Jehoshaphat defeat 
all the kings that gather together against him without a fight. The wealth of three nations were converted to him. From now on, you will never need to fight before you win. You will remember, those of you who know the details, Nigeria was living under a siege. At a particular time, there was a reign of terror by a military president. And then he wanted to transform to a civilian president. And then his abalis told him, this your plan cannot come to pass because of a certain man who is praying at a place called Camp. Unless you remove that man, your plan won't work. And so information came to me, sir, they are coming for you. And in those days, when they come for you, that's the end of the story. As an ordinary human being, when I heard that, I was troubled. I didn't tell my wife. But I, I, got, I got out. I said, I'm going for my prayer walk. Because it wasn't an ordinary prayer walk that day. just been praising God for a while before I prayed when God spoke to me and said, hey son, don't worry yourself. I will take care of the situation. I prophesy to somebody here today every force ganging up against you shall be scattered. was a Tuesday of the week of the Holy Ghost service. And daddy said to me, son, as soon as your children gather, ask each one to greet his fellow and say, Happy New Year. In June, I came because I know his voice, he's my commander in chief. I announced it to the people, crazy as it may sound. I said, Go ahead, greet one another and say Happy New Year. They didn't query me, they just greeted. By the following Monday, we knew why we were celebrating. Can you shake hands with one or two people and say Happy New Year? <laughs> because a new year is beginning for you now. Let me close, let me close, because uh, <laughs> the conclusion of the matter is this, the conclusion of the matter is this, whenever God wants to do complete restoration, Everything he spoke to will obey him. Bones obeyed him. The bones joined to bones. Flesh obeyed him. Skin obeyed him. Even the wind obeyed him. 
The question is, the question is, will you obey him? I want to encourage those of you who have waited this long and are moving. You're about to miss the best part of tonight. If I were you, I will wait. Because we still have some things to do that he asked me to do. I want you to pray one final prayer before I do the other things he asked me to do. Stand on your feet and say, Father, I will obey you. Let my restoration be complete. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. I will obey you in everything. Whatever you ask me to do, I will do. Let my restoration be complete. Let my restoration be complete. Thank you, Father. obey you in all things I will witness I will win souls I will I will pay my tithes I will honor you with my first fruit I will obey you in everything Lord let my rest complete if bones obey you I will obey if flesh obey you I will obey if the wind can obey you I will obey you Lord let my restoration be complete. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Your dry bones shall live again. And you become part of a mighty army of the Most High God. You will never know shame again. Not only next year, but for the rest of your life, you will swim in joy. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. God bless you. Very quickly, we have three things more to do. But they, they won't take time. One of which is, I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask God for a Christmas present that you want him to deliver before Christmas Day. Second, of course, I mean one of the other three is that we can't have an evening like this without saying thank you to Jesus. We're going to do that too. And then, of course, even before that, is that the Lord spoke to me while I was preparing for this. He said he is aware that every one of us would prefer, if it were possible, for me to lay hands on you. But that is humanly impossible. So he told me what to do. He told me to buy thousands of ankachi and I have practically touched every one of them and now what we're going to do uh, please pay attention what we are going to do is that the pastors are going to come, they are going to take one each of these handkerchiefs, they will line up, 
you will come they will just touch your head with that handkerchief and I'm telling you something will happen now why the pastors are getting ready so that we can get that out of the way let us quickly take our thanksgiving offering and say thank you to God that one won't take five minutes the choir will please come and sing and the ushers please place the baskets where we can reach them and you know the procedure just go to the nearest basket drop your offering and we'll bless it later on uh, so as soon as the choir begin to sing dance to the nearest basket drop your thanksgiving offering and go back to your seat in the meantime the pastors will get ready so that they can minister to you as i've been instructed over to you band is good to me the lord i'm serving 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 is good
There should be no rush. There is, I mean, we have enough pastors to attend to everybody. And don't forget, after they've touched your head, you see, go back to your seat because we're going to pray for your Christmas present. Unless you don't need Christmas one. Present. If you don't need one, then you can go. Don't need one, Let's, then you can let go. Let there be no rushing. Let's, Wait, let there the be no rushing. Up, Wait, and then the pastors are lined up. Very orderly and then fashion. you come and they will very touch your orderly with fashion. The and they will and touch your head on, with the handkerchief. You go back to and your And then seat. you keep on for the final yeah. prayer. All right. The music can continue. Pastors, the please, let's move prayer. fast. Let's move fast. God bless you. You can continue. Ibanda da kolo shoni bada, oda beni we won la la. Ibanda da kolo shoni bada. O da be ni bo won la la Igo lo won de o mi je da wa ti orin ayo lo ni bo ekun Igo lo won de o mi je da wa ti orin ayo lo ni bo ekun Ah iba da da ko lo si o ni pada O da be ni pe won la la Ah iba da da ko lo si o ni pada Oh, that baby, me want la la. He go long one day, but me get a wati. Only I your love me go echo. He go long one day, but me get a wati. Only I your love me go echo. Ah, if I da da go long, she only bada. Oh, that baby, me want la la. If I da da go long, she only bada. Oh, da be ni pe won la la. He go long one day, but me je da wati. Ori a yo lo ni go eku. He go long one day, but me je da wati. Ori a yo lo ni go eku. Kile we o iba ta da ko lo so ni pada. Oh, da be ni pe won la la. Iba ta da ko lo so ni pada. Oh, that baby, we want la la. 
iko na wade o mi de dawati ori ayo lo ni bo ekun iko na wade o mi de dawati ori ayo lo ni bo ekun lo ni bo ekun o ori ayo lo ni bo ekun lo ni bo ekun ori ayo lo ni bo ekun ibanu je o si mo ori ayo lo ni bo ekun ijaku le ti sano ori ayo lo ni bo
Let somebody shout hallelujah. <clears throat> Just be seated for one minute. Now, for those of you who are watching all over the world on the internet and on television, this particular one is for you. So you go to your television set now and or your computer or whatever and touch the exact location of this one that I'm holding by the power of the almighty God who is everywhere at all times you get your touch right now by going to your television set or your computer and touch that particular spot and you get your own miracle in Jesus' mighty name. All right, I hold it on for just another one minute to let you get to your TV set or get to your computer set and touch the exact location of this one that I'm holding now. You receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Then one special announcement, by the grace of God, next year, I will be going to Israel on pilgrimage between 13th of May and 21st of May. If you are interested, you can contact your pastors and they will be able to tell you what to do. The team will be discussing there will be the power of his resurrection. It's going to be a glorious period in Jesus' name. Tomorrow evening, or this evening rather, because we're already on Saturday, the last service is going to be a combination of anointing service and Holy Communion service. And those of you who know from experience, the Saturday night had always been the best night of the Congress, so I will see you there. Now, thank you, pastors, for what you've done. Everybody now, whatever you want God to do for you before Christmas Day, go ahead and ask him now. Anything you want him to do for you before Christmas Day, ask him now. Don't let it be small. Make it as big as you can. Make it as difficult as possible. Let God show you that within all things are possible. All things. Thank you, Father. Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In that name that's above every other name, I am in total agreement with you in Jesus' name. Because it is written, if two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask on earth, that it will be done for us by our Father in heaven, I agree with you completely in Jesus' name. 
latest by December 24th, you will receive your miracle. The Almighty God will bless your offering and He will use it for His glory. And you will never beg again. You will never borrow again. In the midst of famine, you will prosper. The Lord will go with you. It will be well with you. And you will remember for the rest of your life that this is the night when the tide turned for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go in peace. And pastors, you are free to go from here also. Who got the biggest miracle of tonight? Let me hear you shout the biggest hallelujah. 